couple of decades to without road maintenance and stuff. So we uh, we bought a car, paid cash for it to have the advantage of uh, insurance coverage and no payments. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we have uh, both a very good store in the basement. So, you have, uh, do people come help you take care of things? I mean, are you still starting your own fires and all that stuff? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I have my boys around. I mean, yeah. Do they, do they live here? Uh, Sam is here, although he's leaving today to go to New York. And, uh, I got another boy who's, he's the one who's the householder yogi, who has a couple of kids and a little house and the two golf carts. <laughs> uh huh. We suddenly broke out in golf cart challenger, which is kind of funny because we've been into them, not big, but uh, we built our first hybrid golf cart 25 years ago. <laughs> Let me ask you about starting out. <coughs> so. <coughs> I ain't contagious, you just get allergic. What was, I guess, the big question, what was your goal when you started out, and how much of that do you think you achieved? <laughs> it's a big question. But. My wife was having a midwife conference here, had a whole bunch of young midwife helpers and students and stuff, and they wanted to talk to me, and they came over to talk to me, they talked to me for a while, and they kept asking me this question, much like that one, Yeah. and it was sort of like, what were you thinking, <laughs> sort of a question. And I mean, how much did you think so you could I, accomplish with, with... So when, after they left, I thought, I never really answered their question good. Uh -huh. Why didn't I answer the question good? I'm thinking it over, and I said, oh, how could I forget? It's written on the front of the bus. It says, out to save the world. Right. <laughs> That's what we were doing. Right, right. And we still are, and we have amazing tentacles for a bunch of hippies. Like, we have a, uh, a uh, project in Belize. Uh, we're, we have a project in Belize, in Belize that deals with uh, Guatemalan Mayans who speak Spanish, Belizean Mayans, uh, Belizean, uh, Belizean black tribe of, of Belize, a lot speaks of reggae, and uh, then the other the other places there's a, a runaway black guys hooked up with it to make their own tribe with a, a bunch of guys, <laughs> and so we, we would deal with all those tribes. Yeah, Ben and Ben and Belize is pretty amazing. Oh yeah, it makes the people down there. Yeah, it is. And uh, so here, but here, I mean, so you have tentacles throughout the world, but so that's a great broad goal. But what did you think when you bought this land? I mean, specifically for this project, what were your hopes? I did mean, not buy this land specifically for this project. Oh, you didn't. Okay. I bought this land because I had fifty carloads of hippies, and we really needed to park. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty bus loads, man, and the neighbors. That were very sounds ridiculous. chaotic. Well, we got through. Uh, the cops learned what to do to us was put a car in front with a red light on and take us through town. <laughs> Parade you through town and then let you go. They they were very good to us. It, it, there's something that happened at the very beginning that set the tone for the whole thing, and uh, we left that picture out there. We left that night. We got to the Oregon border and we were busted immediately with hundreds of red, white, and blue lights. Uh, cops from from, uh, from two states, sheriffs from five counties, mm -hmm. FBI, TBI, etc., and all like that. And uh, so they, they they popped us, and the next day, they at least had the grace to be slightly embarrassed when they bailed me out with a handful of, of a, a handkerchief full of change and small bills. <laughs> what did they charge you with? They, have, they weren't sure. They didn't know what yeah. to do about it, you know. So we went in in front of the judge, and I said, well, there's a lot of talk about peace. This is just after <laughs> Charlie Manson and ROTC. Thing. And uh, we said, uh, we are people who are for peace, and we are people who believe in being peaceful about being for peace. And he questioned me a little bit, you know, and he said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you go on your speaking tour, and you're going to come back here after your speaking tour, and I'll know what you were. If you were for peace or not? Yeah. Uh -huh. And when Did we you got, go back there? We went back there, and when we went back there, 
every piece of wall in that whole office building was wire service headline pictures of the farm. <laughs> Yeah. With the caravan, the buses and everything. They was, we obviously, and we made good. The cops in one state would turn us over to the cops in the next state and tell them we're okay. So and you kind of got left alone after that. Mostly, mostly. And then you ended up here. Well, we didn't exactly end up here. We we didn't know we were looking for land. We were the speaking to a bunch of preachers had come from all over the United States to a convention on hippies because it was happening in the small towns, and. Uh, I was the only hippie who got to talk to him. I was, I'd been doing money in my class for some years by then, so I had mm -hmm. a gang of hippies I knew. <coughs> and uh, we, uh, they, uh, they had their convention, and a couple of them came back and said, we'd like for Stephen to come out and speak in our hometowns, and we'll set him up in a tour. So they set me up in a speaking tour in 42 states. So you were talking at churches? Is that what you were A talking? lot. Uh -huh. And uh, it was, uh, uh, it was a, 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 a new thing, everything. The Monday Night Class had been the same guys pretty much every Monday. And we got into very developed metal languages. <laughs> did, did, I mean, how many people did you start out with and how many? <coughs> well, Monday Night Class started out with six. And by the time... I got to. I was going to go on the road. I'd been meeting with a thousand or fifteen hundred people on Monday nights. No door charge. No ID check at the door. Only thing is that you had to. Uh, I had to do my best to answer the question, and and uh, the guy who asked the question is the one who got to say was it answered or not. And this was in California. This was at the Family Dog in the Great Highway in San Francisco, and. Uh, so we went out and we had a great time on the, on the caravan and just meeting people all over the place. And some people were so practical. You know, we went to Anoka, Minnesota, and the cops came out and said, all right, laundromats are down that road. Uh, gas stations are down that road. Uh, right. you know, it just hooked us up like the right. first, which essentially we were for him. <laughs> and where were you, were you finding farms to camp on? Or? We were finding, we, were camp, we camped on red zones. <laughs> we, like we had a baby in Ripley, New York, and we asked, where, where can we put the caravan while we have this baby? And they says, right downtown on all the parking meters, fill them up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pay for the parking meters? No. I assume not. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> but the, when the baby was born, the church didn't ring the bells. Because they didn't think it was a... A Christian child, or what? No, no, they just thought that it was a celebrating a birth, and they rang church bells. Okay, okay. Nice. <coughs> okay, so let me get... <coughs> I guess I have a, a very serious interest in this, you know, specific project. So, when you get, uh... I guess, tell me the genesis of the idea of... of you, know, you need a place to park all these hippies. Well... How does that turn this, into, this, like, this, a... Here's how it came out organically. Uh, we got back off the road to San Francisco after seven months on the road, and uh, we had been all over the United States. And uh, we got back and took a look at San Francisco, and it was really sad. It was really sad. It was heroin and mm -hmm. crack and alcohol and a speed freak sleeping in doorways and all that kind of thing. And we said this scene is blown. We can't do anything to this. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, this is a driver's meeting. We're going to pull out next Sunday. And everybody got their buses together and got ready. And uh, and we took off and we came to uh, Tennessee because <coughs> because the uh, people here had been very nice and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers had just finished building an RV park for uh, Upperland. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful hot water showers place, <laughs> you know. And they just gave it to the caravan. We came in and filled it up and held a court with the press. <laughs> That's a long trip. So, I mean, were you traveling? You weren't coming directly from California. You were still talking, and then you ended up here? We or? Got, no, we, we went to 7,000 mile circumnavigation okay. in the United States. Back to here. And then somebody said, well, uh, if we're going to be, well, I, I guess it was my idea. I said, we 
are such a huge organism that we need to have a voice. We need to have a band. Mm -hmm. So guys who were good musicians got together and started putting together a band and, and like that. And one of the guys says, I got to go to the guitar store. I can't play rock and roll on this 12 string. And uh, went to the guitar store and the lady in the guitar store says, well, my old daddy's home place down in Lewis County hasn't had anybody meet uh, living on there in 35 years and you guys can go park there while you look for land. Uh huh. So we went down and that was 600 acres. When you were coming down after you turned off Highway 20, the kind of partly pine, partly oak stuff on the right was that was that place. Okay. And uh, there was a little meadow in the middle of which we filled with buses. And then uh, we wanted a tractor and this guy had well, you got a tractor, you got one of those little low Fords with small back wheels and wide front wheels and stuff in there. And there was a guy who used to ride with the Angels, looked at that and said, that ain't a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> so he went out and found the guy on this land, and uh, that guy uh, said, come on, you know, come on over, and uh, we bought his tractor. And he said... Uh, you were getting a tractor because you were starting to plant stuff over there? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah take care of ourselves right I mean we had people sitting cross-legged in rows doing the dirt by hand in front of each person until we got any equipment or anything right and uh, then uh, he said he said you guys should buy my place it's a thousand acres and the room doesn't go through so that sounds right that's about all you need <laughs> so we bought it and so we went to one wall to get a loan and the guys at the bank says it's not just that you're these out of town hippies. It's that's the biggest bit loan anyone's asked for at this bank. Right. So we went back and told him that. And he says, "I trust you. I'll carry you." And he was right because we paid him off in two or three years. Wow. So he just went on your good word that, that doesn't happen with bankers anymore. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> well, my bank is, is my my bank is different here because they are. Well, they've known you. Uh, well, all of them. Like at, at the at the uh, little uh, Summertown Market, uh, it used to be whenever I went there, the lady always called me Sugar Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so keep telling me yeah. you got uh, you got so the we, land, we got here and we we found this piece of land and then we moved on to it, and uh, a bunch of people planted pot, and they were like you know apartment people. They thought the nine by twelve rug was a wilderness, right? And, they, and also, that you think a, a farmer is going to see a new plant and not be curious. <laughs> right. And uh, so they had planted pot out there. I was again, but I, by the time I came off the caravan, I was physically exhausted from driving the head bus for mm -hmm. that sure. long. And uh, so then was the there word came out to... that there was people, that there was a train track went through there. And the word started coming out that if you go through on the train, sometimes... You can see naked hippie chicks playing flute to the pot plants. <laughs> I assume that was true. Uh, I assume that was true. Yes, it was true. Okay. <laughs> Does that make them grow better? <coughs> well, we got stoned. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was a. So the neighbors started getting a little, a little anxious about that. You never kind were of stuff? anxious. We, I. Th on the way in here, I said, here's what we got to do. We got to be the good hippies that they leave a saucer of milk on the steps for. Right. That's who we got to be. So do they get mad that you're growing pot? Well, they. Uh, I did a year. You did a year in jail? Yeah. Yeah. And mainly because they, they, they busted three guys in the field and they were ahead. And I couldn't see them going somewhere unknown like that without me. Yeah. So I just went ahead and said, we're called collective. It's mine, too. Uh-huh. So... So how many people went to jail? There was the four, four of us you. Went to, the four of us went to jail, and uh, they got uh, county time. It was eleven twenty nine, mm -hmm. but I got a one to three to be sure I did my whole year. Uh huh. Was that in the county pen or the state no, pen? The penitentiary, man. It looks like yeah. a medieval uh, insane asylum. Where's that? Up in Nashville. Up in Nashville, yeah. This is. It's built in the eighteen late eighteen something. So. Uh huh. Like that, but did that change your outlook was, at all when you were in jail? Well, I, I was I was working all that time. I, I was doing what I needed to be doing, organizing and stuff. Getting it, uh, the first thing I knew was, we can keep this at bay for about three years appealing, <laughs> <coughs> and if we uh, 
uh, do that, we'll we have time to get our systems happening and get our wells dug and get houses together and mm -hmm. stuff and get everything together before the, th the four of us have to go away. So we did that and that worked. And uh, so, how many people were permanently still like hanging out here at that time? Obviously, not well, fifteen hundred. There, there was there was uh, when we first came in here, we had uh, just under three hundred. Uh -huh. We had fifty buses. We right. started with twenty five and had fifty by the time we quit. So by the time you're like actually building houses, you know, or how many yeah, how, how many houses are you trying to, you're thinking, oh, I, we no, have we to build. Don't. See, you have an idea of that you make plans about things. Right, right, and this that is just are, organically, the, this happened much more organically. It's like planning a tidal wave. Right, right, okay. Plan, planning what are you going to do when your tidal wave gets you. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of, because the people I know that have, you know, live yeah. in intentional communities, it's like, it's intentional and they... You know, there's a book on this. Well, you know, I keep telling people that people read and they did not try to have do plans. It. We had principles. Right. Good point. Yeah. And uh, the neighbors saw how hard we were. They thought we were really cute at first when we asked them to come over and show us how to sharpen a chainsaw. Right. And uh, we had one guy offered to pray over a carburetor. One of our guys, not theirs. And uh, We have become more techy since then. We uh, <coughs> we got to be uh, anti-nukers. We traveled around working against the nuclear fuel cycle, and uh, uh, we thought, well, if we're going to complain about stuff being hot, we ought to be able to tell if it is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we bought a Geiger counter, and that season's Geiger counter was a pig. It weighed about fifteen pounds. It had a six-volt lantern battery that big. <laughs> Digitally, it looked like something would go with. Was it just an analog meter, or was it a digital meter? It went, meh, 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 uh, uh. <laughs> you know. And so one of the guys on that crew, his wife, was having twins. And the midwives had bought a Doppler effect fetal heart monitor for checking the twins. And he went home and checked out that little piece of equipment. He says, you know, what that thing has in there is a delaying and averaging circuit. And if we could take that delaying and averaging circuit and hook it on to that Geiger tube, which is such a kind of a deal, Mm -hmm. We did, and we got something that we had a dial, and you could write down a number from, you know, and we miniaturized it down to about that big, and when 9-11 happened, we had to hire a lot of people for that business, and we're sold to anti-nukers as Snoop Buster, and we're sold as Radiation Alert to cops and Waymasters. And so this is a product that you're manufacturing? <coughs> we're not only manufacturing, we are officially listed as the only high-tech business in Lewis County. Oh, really? <laughs> I bet you never thought that was going to happen. <laughs> well, we thought we could do anything. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the neighbors, we've had, we've had a lot of different kind of assaults here, and things have changed over the years. Like more recently, we had some people who were going to buy a thousand acres on our front border and put on a shoot village to teach hand to hand combat in and stuff yeah. like that. Doesn't sound like and a good so fit. We, so we, we you know, told them we'd. We went to go ask them what they were doing, and they said, that's not pertinent. When guys give you answers like that, you got to look out, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's not pertinent. Well, what was was pertinent they didn't know about was that the two hippies who were talking to him were lawyers. <laughs> right. And uh, so we went to the sheriff. We, we elected the sheriff. We gave the sheriff their license plates, and the sheriff told us who he was and where he had come from. So when you say you elected the sheriff... <laughs> That sounds like a good way to get around any potential, um, you know, run-ins with the well, law. Well, we, we, we <laughs> didn't come in here and set up as, as a, we set we set up as a, to help out the local Democrats. Uh huh. And so you just you're saying that you have like uh, enough. There's you have enough people with, in this county and the on the, the Democratic side. That, was the guys were influence. blocking up the roads and neighbors were out with their chainsaws unlocking them just as fast as they blocked them. Uh huh. You know, and, and eventually they realized that they were outgunned. Nobody liked them. The, the guy who was trying to sell the thing had to withdraw the deal because it wasn't going to happen. And we ran those guys out of the state. We had them, we put them in court. And when they came off down the steps of the court, there was three television stations waiting for them. <laughs> and so they left. And uh, we heard that the guy was one of these uh, big... Uh, a scam artist and he got nailed for an 80 million dollar scam down the line after he tried to mess with us but our neighbors at first they they, they, they thought we were something wrong with us because we didn't have guns and 
that got a little bit better when we pointed out that the guy who was the gate man had traveled for several years with the Marine Corps rifle and pistol team, was probably the best shot in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I myself am a combat uh, veteran from Korea, and uh, another another guy uh, was the uh, not just the chopper pilot, that main, uh, the mechanic that maintained the chopper, also the guy who jumped out and picked up the wounded and threw him in. In Korea? Yeah. It, yeah. No, I was in, he was in Nam. Nam. And so we had... Uh, that kind of that kind of things here, and the neighbors just you know fell right into that. And, you know, oh well, yeah, these guys are veterans and stuff. You know, leave them alone. Well, I'm very curious with your years of wisdom. I mean, the whole talking about guns actually made me think of hunting, and just like, and that just whatever sustainability. I mean, do you guys have? Do people hunt here that no. live here? No. Okay. I or my is everybody was a vegetarian hunter. or More mostly? Less. My father w was was a hunter. Mm -hmm. And one of my uh, uh, treats when I was a kid is when he would unlock the gun uh, cabinet and let me clean all the guns. Mm -hmm. And between the guns I learned from him and then the ones I learned in the room, I know lots you know, of specifications well. about guns that have been obsolete since the 40s. <laughs> well, guns don't get that obsolete is part of the point. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, so people here, at one time we had more college degrees than the Tennessee State Legislature did. So how many people live here now? Oh, Just roughly. under 300 right now. Just under 300? At our peak, we were... Well, what happened was we... It's just we got to be a bigger bear than these woods would support. Uh-huh. We were just too huge to be taken care of here. And uh, so some some folks just uh, left at an individual level. Other folks who started other farms other places. We had we, At one time, we had 25 farms. In the vicinity? No, all over. All over. Ireland. And we, uh, this is before cell phones. And we like to have good communication. Mm -hmm. And so we had a ham radio in our, our bus. Uh, this is not, what we came here was a bunch of school buses. This was our touring bus. Uh huh. <laughs> Another trip entirely. And we took when that was to, that? We took that to Guatemala seven or eight times. So you've been on a bunch of trips on this guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh... Okay, so you guys... All right, I understand the organic process a lot better now that you've explained it to me. Um, have you guys coalesced around a kind of mission statement at this point, or is it still loosey-goosey? We're loosey -goosey? still writing mission statements and stuff, but basically, I mean, you know, we're very idealistic, and, and, and we're human, and we make mistakes. We had a a big argument between two of our trustees that ended up in mutual fuck yous. Mm -hmm. And we had to have an election over that. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, everybody was involved. We had to have an right. election about it. <laughs> so is that just, yeah, how does the political structure work here? I mean, with 300 people, you kind of have to have a political structure of some sort. Yeah, is there a uh, board of directors? board of directors. And, and uh, I don't know, you haven't been down to the farm yet, but... There's a water tower down there, 50, 60 feet tall, that uh, uh, you know we put in here, and and the uh, Nuke Buster Company is the one that made enough money to put that water tower up, mm -hmm. and it's now currently, as I said, the only high tech business in Lewis County. It also uh, it gives health care. I had a grandson had a terrible tumor, and health care that place took care of it completely, clear through. Uh -huh. He came out perfect, and you know. Nice. So, and my youngest son, you know, you never know who's going to be a householder yogi. My, my oldest boy, he's not really what you call a householder yogi, but he does have two black belts in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu jiu mm -hmm. and an EMT uh, ticket. And, uh, and he got another son that makes his money doing computer work in New York. And uh, I have a daughter who... Uh, uh, put herself through school waiting tables, and uh, she deliberately worked in Mexican restaurants mm -hmm. so she could practice Spanish. That's a good idea. And so now she's considered as, as a, a teacher with an alternate language as well, mm -hmm. and uh, she uh, is quite capable of, of changing tough lines with the fry cook. <laughs> and, uh, Where does she live? She's in Nashville. In Nashville? Yeah. And... Uh, She's a straight-A student, which she gets from her mother. 
I, I, my enemy's not here, I'm, and I'm not talking about it. But you see, I'm really, really part of the story because I mean, is a part of the story that's a uh, summa cum laude, mm -hmm. has an honorary doctorate from a university in London given to her for her midwife work. Right. Yeah, you, were, you mentioned that to me on the phone. That's yeah. awesome. That's incredibly impressive. Yeah, and, and she's right now out on the coast, but she's... When did you guys meet and get married? Like, what was that? Was that... We, uh, she came, uh, while I was doing Monday night class, I got a job doing the 90-day Christmas rush at the post office. Mm -hmm. And I met this guy there who smoked dope. And we found out that the elevator stopped, but you could get out and walk up one more floor to a little room where we smoked dope. <laughs> and uh, and then he took me home to meet his wife, which may have been his first mistake. Because <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> <laughs> me and her have five kids now. Right. And uh, it's a she is so hot right now, all over the world. Uh, people uh, contracts to do books, contracts. It. She has she got a filming crew following her around. Reminds me back in Korea, uh, if the army wanted to tease the Marines, they'd say, "Marines, man, they got a life photographer for every squad." <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, she's that. Yeah, <laughs> she's that life. She was the life photographer for every squad. She's got a several people crew that's following her around right now. Well, tell me a little bit about her midwifery. Well, we delivered our first babies on the road uh -huh. in the caravan before we got here. And is that how she got interested in it? Well, it was, there was a baby had to be taken care of. Uh -huh. They got the first one delivered okay, but none of them knew how to start it. I knew how to do that just from being in the military. And uh, so they, they started delivering babies on the road before we got here and stopped. And uh, we met this doctor named Louis Le Père, which is Louis the father, it means. And Louis Le Père uh, showed her where to squeeze a baby to make him breathe, and where to squeeze mm -hmm. a baby to help his heart and stuff. Mm -hmm. and just really taught her all that kind of stuff and of what to do about bad airways and all that kind of stuff. And so he just gave everything he showed her, she used in the next two or three birthings, and they saved lives. And. Uh, there was some stuff that I that I did not because I was such an expert or anything, but that I was already a, a combat veteran and had already been teaching in college and already had kids and mm -hmm. had been through quite a bit of life already. And uh, this one time, if one of one of our first early kids before the before the midwives ever realized that there was making them breathe, right? <laughs> and uh, this lady came and banged on the door of my bus. And said, oh, the baby's been born. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I looked at her face. It was tragic. So, Ooh, there's something wrong because she ain't telling me. Mm -hmm. And I hit the ground running and got back to that other bus. And I went in there and there's three very quiet women sitting around a little gray baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came in somewhere along the line. Somebody had told me, you don't breathe a whole lungful into a baby. Mm -hmm. They're too little. You just give them a mouthful. Mm -hmm. So I picked up that little baby and gave him a mouthful. Mm -hmm. He just fired right up, turned mm -hmm. pink. Hollered. Turned him right on. Yeah, turned him on just like that. Uh -huh. mm. And uh, I ended up teaching that to a bunch of midwives. And I used to be back up to the midwives. To say I'm back up to the midwives now is absolutely absurd. Right. <laughs> because because they are so, so, far. so advanced in, yeah. in what they can do and everything. Right. And, and so the midwives, if there's one pickup working on the farm, the midwife has it. And so how is that business, is that, is that something that, you know, they do for the, in, locally in the community, or is it we also a well, nationally we, consulting, or? Well, what we do locally in the community is, there was a very nice doctor here, who's also a Korean Marine veteran, and he and I had some stuff going, and uh, he uh, had been turned, given uh, the practice of the Amish in the next county, and we got a bunch of Amish who came down from Lancaster County, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Yeah, we saw a couple on the way yeah. down. And uh, so uh, they were they were here, and they were losing midwifery. They were losing it. We've given it back to a few people. We gave it back to them, and we gave it back to the Indians at Onondaga in upstate New York, too. But we realized that, like, what Dr. Williams was doing was not just training our midwives. He was training the people he was going to give the Amish to. <laughs> uh -huh. So we, we acquired the Amish along 
with that. And the Amish are fun. They're fun. They're, 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 but uh, somebody called us the Technicolor Amish. A technical Amish? Technicolor. Technicolor Amish. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, all the Amish have changed quite a bit since they're here. They, they, they might be carrying a, you know, a few screwdrivers and stuff in their pocket these days. Right. <laughs> Would be hard to resist, I think. And, uh, and they grow nice veggies, and we, we, you know we do that with them. And uh, we are our kids who went to school, the local colleges and stuff around here, all made really good grades and stuff. And nobody around here thinks pot makes you dumb. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so specifically, I got just a couple more questions. I want to also give these guys an opportunity to ask more yes. questions if you're if you're st yes. still feeling all right. Um, I mean, okay, so the two last questions, and they're kind of big questions, but, uh, so, you know, for our book, we're specifically looking for other kinds of, you know, how, how you dealt with, I mean, you've taught, you've touched on this a lot, but just run-ins with the law or, or the surrounding community and how you dealt with that. And if you have any, you know, words of advice for, for how to kind of deal with those situations just from your personal experience. Well, when... When the old matriarch of the nearby family who adjoins the farm was dying, farm girls went and sat with her for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we got bonded that way at that kind of level. And, and when we So this interaction with the community is super we, important. For, yeah, absolutely. Get rejected like an old heart transplant. Right. <laughs> and uh, we... Uh, so has that been? Do you feel like that's been one of the farm's great successes? Is how well, well it's integrated it, with it's, the with the surrounding community and. Uh, uh, when Al Gore came here to visit, our my friend Albert Bates, our lawyer, had, had just written a book about the climate and crisis. I, was I sent him an email, but I didn't get. Uh, he might maybe uh, he's not around and, now uh, or something. But I'm not sure. And uh, uh, Albert Al Gore came here, and, and we all got to know him and meet him and hang out with him some. And he ended up thinking that Albert Bates did so good with this book that he was going to do his book on climate. Oh, yeah? And had Albert write the, the, forward, the forward, forward for his. Is, oh, yeah? I didn't realize that. Yeah. And uh, nice. we, we got the best reputation almost of any APs you know about. <laughs> and you think that's kind of, I mean, I'm just... We I'm, built it piece by piece yeah, on just, purpose to survive. Just keeping working at it and... Keeping yep. in touch and I was forcing yourself a, to integrate a, uh, with the community and making sure that I was lecturing at a business university in uh, Austria, and they wanted to know what, what, what business ethics meant to me. Uh huh. As well, what it meant on the farm was you never burn a neighbor. Right. When you work for them, you pay. You work hard. When they work for you, you pay well. Right. And we just put, laid down about a dozen of those little simple things. Mm -hmm. Which Common sense, as, but are not that easy to always follow through with. Yeah, that that, that was really a, you know, business ethics, but as we understood right. it, and uh, people respect the honest way we deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have other people from not Amish people coming here to have babies. We have we had a lady come flying from Germany to have her baby delivered, and wanted it videotaped because her obstetrician had told her she could not deliver. She said, I want to take him back to the picture and show him. <laughs> so, it was kind of fun to be doing like that. Anime is just so smart. I tell her sometimes, to be as smart as you are and do your homework too, it's almost not fair. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're supposed to procrastinate if you're that smart, right? <laughs> so let me, uh, one last question I definitely have is... Uh, let me just check on this thing. I'm not super familiar with it, so I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. No, it's actually really good. I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it right. I think I am. Looks like it's all good. Okay. Um, just, you know, uh, you know, a generic question of what you hope this place happens. You know, you hope it keeps going, keeps growing, stays the same size, you know, after you're long gone. How do you, how do you hope that this, I mean, it's awesome. I haven't really gotten a chance to look around, but the reputation has been there for yeah. ever since I've been alive. We have six and a quarter square miles. Right. And, uh, so it's kind of, it's more taking places to other, 17, taking the, the ethics to other places and the ideas to other places. what we live on. Right. 
and 2,300 acres is green belt that is uh, registered with the government mm -hmm. as green. And uh, the neighbors, from that thing about the, the paramilitary group and stuff was in there, uh, one of us asked one of the neighbors, says, well, who did you want to, to buy the land? And they said, you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we had already proved that we could own a thousand acres and not cut it. <laughs> right. So I tell people sometimes, we're not rich enough hippies to save any redwoods, but we might have half a million oak trees. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is the percentage of cleared land, forested land here? Uh, there's about 150 acres cleared and the rest is woods. So let me ask you a question that um, relates to my own experience. That's about, you know, houses. I know that some intentional communities have tried to you know, group houses closer together to, you know, mimic so it's more like a pedestrian friendly and people maybe aren't as dependent on cars or do you feel like you didn't, that we have this committees is a, a argue walkable... all the time about that. You what? We have committees that argue all the time. Yeah. So people are just divided on it or... Yeah, well... There's one lady, she's the tree hugger's tree hugger. Man. She wants us to let the fields that we have grow over. Uh huh. And I says, look, we got six and a quarter square miles. Can't we have 150 acres of fields? Right, we gotta <laughs> eat, right? And uh, so we have interminable meetings. The only thing that makes our meetings easier to handle is uh, sometimes somebody passes a joint around. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that would happen at my board meetings. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, and uh, the people here, my friends here, they gave me a little Valentine party this year. My birthday is the, the 16th. May I ask? And, How uh, old? 75. 75. Well, that's a big one. Yeah. And uh, they uh, said, uh, somebody said, How would I describe myself? And I said, a developed hippie with a couple of hundred really good friends. That's a pretty good answer. Yeah. And uh, I'm friends with, you know, uh, Satchitananda, uh, Suzuki Roshi, my Zen master man there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a, lot, with a lot of those guys with, like that. and They're they are amused by me, mostly. You know. Well, I'm sure they have great respect for you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> stuck with it and de developed so much here over your life. It's very impressive. Yeah. Well, that's that's part of the deal is uh, uh, doing it with the opportunities that you get. I had no idea what opportunities I would have presented to me in my life. I mean, it's easy to meet uh, you know young folks like us that are into these kinds of things, but to get to meet, you know, there aren't that many people that have been trying to make it happen on one level or another for, There's for a few their whole lives. The there are, but yeah. That, 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 yeah. But mostly we're vegetarians, and mostly we got really nice blood pressures and stuff. From being vegetarian? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're we living And active. being exercised. Active. Yeah. All right. Did you guys have any other? Did you guys have some questions about anything? I mean, we haven't had a chance to see anything yet. But. Yeah. No, I definitely. <coughs> fascinated. I feel like I might have questions as we go. But it seems like a, like, the thing about this place, is like a lot of, really great, uh, opportunities kind of like lined up with people that were able to like pull it together that's what it, it seems like we lined them up yeah how much luck how much well force of will the luck, the luck was been being born in 1935 and, and, and growing up in World War II Korea and the hippies uh huh you know gave me a lot of interesting uh, stuff to work with mm hmm uh what would you ask Hannah Mae if you had a chance? Yeah. Yes, you. Hannah Mae is his wife, you know, did all his good life. Yeah, himself, I know. So. And I mean, that's funny you should ask me that because I've been thinking I have so many questions that I would like to talk, that I would like to ask her. 
Well, I, I've been answering the phone for her for a long time. <laughs> I and I tell uh, and I tell people, uh, there's only a couple of things I'm allowed to tell you. If you're crowning, <laughs> is one thing, and uh, if 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 uh, you know, all I'm allowed to tell you is either call a doctor or go to the hospital. <laughs> Midwives do not allow me to say, to say anything else. <laughs> and uh, the midwives are all. Uh, I started a lot of babies. I don't have to do it anymore. Everybody knows how now. But I started a bunch of babies, and uh, it's. Uh, I know. I feel like I know. I know. Of one, there's one baby that uh, it didn't start, and the midwife handed her to me, and I gave her a breath, and she fired up. When she fired up, I felt the blood hit her brain. I just handed the baby to her and fell out of my bag. <laughs> it was just it was a huge rush. Mm -hmm. Just to see it come along. That, to it come along. Now, just to see it, to feel it, the, uh -huh. you know, the induction of it going on right by me, the brain waking up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and, uh, you know uh, Hermione from Harry Potter? Yeah. I call anime that sometimes. <laughs> no boys get to pass her. <laughs> well, um, it's been a, it's been a pleasure in taking part in this interview. Thank you for letting us come. Listen. Do you have any uh, like? What are your thoughts on like living simply and like especially with like the adaption of different types of technology and stuff? Well, uh, I live pretty simply. If you can call a fifty-four inch television simple, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also we have books. <laughs> oh yeah, you have <laughs> a lot of books. <laughs> An impressive library. Yeah. My wife actually knows where most of them are, too. I was going to say, do you want to find something? Right. Do you have them alphabetically organized or by category? Do you guys, are you guys, on, do you have a, all your electricity comes from, um, are you guys on the grid at all? We're on the grid. Okay. Uh, we're just now putting up a field of, a, of, a, of solar collectors. Uh, uh, you know... Six about. Are they going up right now? No, I, no, I was just thinking that uh, that uh, you haven't been any farther down in the farm than here. Uh, <laughs> I, I had to come right here. It took me longer. How about how about we all get in your car and, and, and take a little ride together around the farm? We can do that. Can we? Uh, we can fail over yeah. there, right? We got yeah, some yeah. stuff out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that sounds really fun. I wanted to ask you if there's like a, what is the kind of 